Today I'm going to be sharing some colored pencil tips and telling you where you can get some really great coral reference photos for your own artwork. Today I am going to be doing a custom pet portrait of this kitty here. Kitty, please don't lick your bum. This is a classy show I, I put on here. Meet Penny. Penny belongs to Than of Tidal Gardens. You may have seen his channel here on YouTube. He has a channel that focuses around coral. He's also a coral vendor out of Ohio. He recently started offering these amazing macro photos that artists can use in our own artwork. I will have links to his YouTube channel as well as his Patreon where you can go ahead and get those reference photos. They are amazing. I signed up and have gotten so, so many amazing, amazing photos in the last few months, which are wonderful for colored pencil because it ends up creating something that looks sort of abstract, even though it's really not. You still have a reference photo. So tons of fun. I will have those links in the video description. For those of you who are members over at my Patreon page, make sure to head over where I've got almost six hours of footage for this lesson. So if you wanted to follow along with this cat and coral, that is going to be the place for you. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer one to two, sometimes three or six in this case, hour long tutorials. I have over 200 available for you now and you get instant access as soon as you sign up to all of these you're seeing here, plus more. If you just wanna see if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I have a link in the description to my Patreon video library where I have a two hour long colored pencil demonstration that you can watch. And that's just for free for checking it out. My first tip for you with colored pencil is make sure you have a good plan, a good design before your pencil ever hits the paper. If that means you sketch it out in a sketchbook first, great, or you can do like I did and I'll have a card pop up showing you how I do this, but I design mine in Photoshop. So I take all of those great reference photos that I have of the coral and I can move them around and decide exactly where they will look best before I ever touch the paper to the pencil. And that will help save you a lot of headaches when you realize halfway through the piece that you wish you would have put something somewhere else. You can't easily change that with colored pencil. So if you plan everything out really well first, that's going to make your life much, much easier. My next tip for you with colored pencil is notice how I'm working in layers. This is not a paint by number. This is not a situation where you just put the right color in the right place. It is a layering process and I'm working with a fairly light hand. I'm not pushing very hard. That is going to allow me to preserve the tooth of the paper so that I can put more layers. And what I'm blending out with there is Gamsol or Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. Either one will work. And it's essentially dissolving the pigment into the paper. It doesn't make the pigment spread around like a watercolor pencil would. It pretty much stays in place, but it helps that that pigment to dissolve into the paper, which helps me to avoid that grainy gritty look. And it takes a lot of layers in, of pencil first before blending out with the odorless mineral spirits in order to get that effect. Now your first few times blending with odorless mineral spirits or the first few layers I should say, will look fairly dull keep layering until you get the color saturation that you want. And if you don't have enough pigment on the paper, there's not a lot for that pencil or the odorless mineral spirits to work with. You want several layers before you even bother blending out with the OMS. As you can see here, just getting a light layer and see how very dull it looks. I'm just going to add other layers on top let it dry. And that's another big tip. Let the odorless mineral spirits dry before you put on other layers with your colored pencil. If you put the colored pencil onto wet paper, paper, pepper, I can't talk, wet paper, you can damage the tooth of that paper. And that's kind of the thing that we're trying to do constantly with colored pencil is make sure we don't damage it so that we can get more layers. So you want to make sure if you are blending out with odorless mineral spirits, let it dry completely before going on to that next layer. Now this white that you're seeing me paint on here, it is not paint. This is a product from brushandpencil.com. It is a mixture of their touch-up texture and titanium white mixture. I'm mixing those together and then I can paint them on with a liner brush and that gives me these really nice white highlights. And I have people ask all the time, can't I just use a gel pen or white acrylic paint? Technically you can, but your work will no longer be archival, meaning that's not really very permanent. It's not going to stick. You would be putting a water-based product on top of an oil or wax-based product, which or what your colored pencils are. So you don't want to use acrylic paint or gel pens or any of that. It can look cool, but if you're selling your work, that is something to be concerned about. And so the only really archival product for adding the white highlights like that is this combination from brushandpencil.com, which is 
made specifically for colored pencils. So you know that's going to be archival. And that's what you're going to see me paint on for those white highlights throughout this piece. I love that product. And I'll have a card pop up that goes over exactly how to use that, that stuff. And see here, again, going back to what I was talking about before, when you get your first few layers with the odorless mineral spirits, how dull everything looks. Just keep layering and building with a light hand. Don't push hard with the pencil. Keep layering until you get that color saturation. The pencil that you're seeing me use here, this one is the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. Well, that you saw me use a second ago. This goes very quickly. But the Derwent Drawing Chinese White is going to be about the most opaque white colored pencil that you can find. It's one of my absolute favorites. That one and the Luminance White, I really like. The Luminance White, I can get finer details with. The Derwent Drawing Chinese White is more of an opaque white. But those are great, great pencils. And you're seeing me use both of those actually a lot here. You can really see this layering process, how you slowly build. And that's another big, big tip for you. With colored pencil, it is a slow medium. When you watch these time-lapse videos or, or where the, the lessons are sped up like this, it gives the impression that you can get something done like this. You should have all that done in, in a night. No, this took me weeks to finish. This is a very, very slow process. Something went terribly wrong with my camera angle there. Now, I have always loved painting anything from the ocean, whales, dolphins, fish, coral, anything. The problem is getting good reference photos. That is a huge challenge. You can more easily find decent photos of fish than of coral. I have not found that many people who take photos and offer that for artists to use in their work. So having these reference photos now is huge, and especially for colored pencil because we typically like to do a lot of uh, very realistic work, a lot of detail, and that requires a really good reference photo, which previously... I just couldn't find very many of. So it's really exciting for me now to have such a huge variety of these photos. For my next step, I'm just painting the background, lots of layers, and you can see I'll add a layer. I blend it out with odorless mineral spirits, let it dry, add a layer, let it dry, and you, it just goes back and forth like that until I build up the color saturation and the smoothness that I'm looking for. Now, part of that was done during the live stream, so I'll have a card pop up. You can see this por portion in real time. Now, what I've started with, it almost looks like I'm drawing a tabby cat, and I'm not. I'm just slowly building up where the lights and darks are going to be on this girl. Now, what I'm looking for when I'm drawing a pet portrait are those lights and darks. Where are my values? The color does not have to be exact. I mean, obviously, you want to go for close, but she doesn't have purple all over her. Whenever I'm drawing an animal with black fur, I'm going to be using a lot of purples, magentas, and blues. If you go straight with just black and white for using the white for highlights and then the black, you end up creating a lot of gray. You end up making the pet look very old and dusty, kind of dirty. So by adding blues and purples, you give their coat a very shiny look. You've got to remember that black all of these colors kind of reflect on that. So they're going to pick up whatever colors are in the background. And typically whenever I'm drawing a an animal with black fur, lots of purple, lots of blue, and lots of magenta are going to be added in there. And it still looks realistic, even though I'm using these crazy colors, it'll still look realistic as long as my values are correct. Are my darks dark enough and lights light enough? That usually is the main problem. When people complain that their work looks flat or cartoony, it's because their values are not right. They're just going for, okay, I need the perfect shade of purple or brown or whatever color they're going for, and they just put that color everywhere. If you want your work to look more realistic, especially if you're working on animals, get those values right. I mean, I guess it works for, for any subject, but you really see a difference in the animals. And don't just put random highlights anywhere. Wherever you put these highlights and shadows, this is what, what determines that underlying bone and muscular structure. So I don't want a random highlight going across the forehead. It'll You can make the animal look very deformed. So you have freedom. You can hype up the contrast. I can take what, what highlights are there and make them even brighter. I just want to make sure they're in the right location. And one of the scariest things for a lot of people are making your darks dark enough. Get those really dark. And for me with colored pencil, when I want my black to look like a deeper, darker black, I'm going to not just use the black pencil. I use black, but I'm also going to add blues and reds, purples. Other colors are going to get mixed into that, and it will make it appear so much darker. If you use black by itself, you're going to end up with a very flat, very dull color. So by mixing in blues and purples right on top and reds right on top of the black, you'll get a much nicer, deeper color. 
She's got a bit of a reddish brown tint on her chest. So I've started with that really bold color and then I will tone that down with other colors on top. When I want my white highlights, I don't typically jump to my polychromos white. The polychromos white is very translucent. It's good for some things, but not in this case where I really want it to stand out. Here, I stick with the Luminance and my Derwent Drawing Chinese white because those are both wax-based white pencils. So they stand out much better. And if you can't get your whites to stand out enough, try that Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture from Brush and Pencil. That stuff is absolutely amazing. And I'm using a light blue for some of the highlights in the shadowed areas, not just white everywhere. And I used that Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture again for the whiskers to get those really nice defined lines. Now this guy was drawn on the live stream, so I'll have another card pop up so you can watch him in real time. Just adding some final details that were not in the live stream here. Now when I add the black along the edges, there I am pushing a bit harder than I do with my normal, or how I normally do with the pencils, because I want it to really, really stand out. So that is one area. That and with the white pencil, I tend to push a little bit harder than what I do with all of the other colors, because I know I'm not going to need to layer color on top of that. I'm just trying to get that nice, crisp edge. Doing that here on this swirly border thing, technical term there. Now on to the copper banded butterflies. With these guys, they are white with the yellowish gold stripe. I'm not just going to leave the white areas white though, they'll look very, very flat. White reflects everything around it. So I'm going to pull in these purples over where the white goes and then I'll use white on top of that as highlights. But I'm gonna get this nice darker base color of purple, purples, magentas, all of that mixed in there, and I'm using oranges and magentas to shade the yellow. Don't jump to thinking black is always the color you need to use to shade something. Usually it's not. Try purples and magentas first for shadows, and especially if you're working on something with oranges and yellows. If you try to shade orange and yellow with black, you get this ugly green. Sometimes that's the look you need. Usually it's not though. More often than not, try shading with those purples and magentas and see if that will give you the look that you want. Adding some detail in there. I'm using the white colored pencil now, but I will come back and add, use the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture to get more defined white highlights. And you're going to go through some seriously ugly layers as you work. Don't let that make you give up. Ideally work one small area, one or two square inches at a time until that area is finished. That way you have some portions of your work that always look good, but it also will help you to not lose your place. If you're trying to work on, let's say the entire cat all at once, it's very, very hard to keep track of where you are and what, what work needs to be done. Usually when someone tries to do the entire cat at the same time, you know, the base layer all together, they end up with something that isn't as realistic as they were hoping for it to be. Try breaking it up into one little area, like in, in the case with her. I focused on her eyes, then her face and ears, and then, you know, worked my way around. But this makes it much easier to tackle. I can focus on smaller details. I don't worry about the rest of the piece, so I'm not getting overwhelmed by that. And I don't lose my place. This little clownfish which is kind of funny that I included because as it turns out, Than, who this is for, doesn't like clownfish. There's the white highlights here, final details with that touch-up texture titanium white mixture. And there we go, there is the finished piece. It was about three weeks to finish. It was a very, very long process, totally worth it. But again, don't feel like you should be getting stuff done in a night you're not going to get the results you're probably looking for in that case. Single pro you know, one project in a night is fine if it's a quick sketch and designs and stuff like that, but for actually get trying to complete a full painting like this, take your time, work slow, and work in one small section at a time, one fish at a time, one coral at a time, or the cat's face at a time, whatever it is that you're working on. Try to break it off into little zones and just focus on that area until your work is finished, or that zone is finished before you move on to the next. I don't think Penny is too impressed with her portrait. 
at all. I worked really hard for this, Penny. Seriously. You can at least act like you're interested. Have you subscribed yet? If not, make sure you do that so you can keep up to date with all of my new videos every single week. You may also want to hit that bell icon because YouTube is really bad about notifying people when a new video goes up otherwise. Or sign up for my email newsletter. That is free. I send out one email a week letting you know whatever new videos went up and along with a few art tips.